Hello, hello. Welcome uh, to our first ever office hours. I am Mel. I am a product manager here at Uptenive. Uh, and today I'm just super excited to be here with Lou, uh, our senior product manager here at Uptenive as well. Um, so we'll do some quick introductions here, go into housekeeping, um, and then get just jump right into some office hours. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, again, my name is Mel. A um, couple things about me. I uh, started out Uptenive in January and was previously an Aptenive customer. Uh, so have a huge passion for what we do here and am consistently working to improve our product for anyone who is using it, especially if you are on the call. Um, a couple of other things about me, I run my own business on the side called Work For Your Beer. Um, we like to both work out and drink craft beer. Um, it's a fun little side biz that I started back in 2016. Um, and in my other limited spare time, I also perform as an aerialist on the big metal hoop that hangs from the ceiling, like Cirque du Soleil style. Um, so those are all of my hobbies. Uh, I also have a corgi named Sir Pancake Bacon Fox. He is my only dog child and only child in general. I like to call this out because he may or may not bark during this call. And I apologize if he does, but just know that's him. He's a little chatty. Um, I'll throw it over to Lou for a quick introduction as well. Awesome. So for those who don't know me, my name is Lou. I'm a senior PM here at Attentive, and I also started in January and I was also previously a customer. Um, prior to Outtentive, I was a customer for about five years in the financial space. Um, so super passionate about user feedback and making sure that we're getting great engagement and building those meaningful customer relationships. I also have a dog child who was named after food. Um, I have a schnauzer poodle mix named Burrito. Um, and I'm not quite as exciting as Mel, but in my free time, I'm super into baking. So very much looking forward to the upcoming Christmas cookie season because my neighborhood gets pretty lit with Christmas cookies and I definitely win every year. <laughs> Yeah, that's a big season for you. I'm actually really oh, it excited is. for you. <laughs> okay, so you'll see all the pictures, I'm sure. Amazing. Um, awesome. So uh, as I mentioned, we'll do some quick housekeeping here. We're going to do a quick overview just on who Aptenive is, if you guys are not familiar with our company. Um, and we will dive into just a quick overview of mobile survey tips and tricks. Um, but really the main point of office hours here is to go through a Q and A. Um, so with that, let's just uh, jump right into housekeeping notes. Um, so this is our first time running this event. If you've attended one of our webinars before, this is gonna be a slightly different format. The goal of office hours is really to be useful for you. Um, this isn't gonna be a long presentation or a monologue from Lou and I, but really, hoping to have more of open Q&A time where we can kind of talk through some of your problems or areas that you're excited about when it comes to this particular topic this time, which is mobile surveys. Um, so whether you're an attentive customer that really wants um, some feedback on your current mobile survey strategy, or if you're not a customer yet and you're just really intrigued and have some general questions or about best practices, um, we're really here to help. Uh, again, this is our first time running this format, so um, please excuse any technical hiccups or any other things we might run into. Um, we're going to iterate as best as we can with this event in the future, um, and we will request your feedback. Uh, so uh, any, any feedback that you guys may have for us on this format, on kind of what we're bringing to the table would be really helpful for us to continue improving our office hours for you. Um, I will say too, you can submit uh, your questions in the Q&A section in Zoom, um, or if you're using uh, LinkedIn Live, you can go ahead and submit them in the chat area. We really, really encourage you to ask questions or discuss in the chat section here too. Um, we want this again, not to be us talking at you the whole time. We'd like this to be more of a conversation. So um, just make sure you hop in on there. And if you are using Zoom, uh, make sure you select your message to go to both attendees and panelists, not just panelists, so everyone can kind of see the questions there. Um, we do have a full hour blocked uh, for uh, office hours. So feel free to pop in or pop out whenever, um, if your question gets asked and that's all you really wanted to hear, feel free to leave. You won't hurt our feelings. So we know your time is valuable. Um, and last but not least here, we are 
Uh, going to be sharing a link to this recording and the slides later this week through email. So make sure you're checking your email. Um, if you are a customer of ours, you will get that link in our product happy hour email that is going out tomorrow. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that. It's our favorite day of the week, product happy hour. And then um, just to reiterate here, while we're here to answer almost any question for you guys that we can, um, if you're a customer of ours and you have uh, something you need to troubleshoot, we'd really recommend reaching out directly to your CSM for that support. They're going to be able to answer your question much better than we are um, since they're already familiar with your app and your use cases. That being said, obviously, if you have a use case and you want to talk about it at a product level, we are more than happy to discuss that. But if, if you're looking for technical support, this is not... This is not that. Office hours is not going to turn into technical support. So I do just want to level set there and make sure we're all clear here. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, let us know uh, in the chat if this makes sense to you guys. Drop, drop in an emoji if we still have you here. Um, and then we can get started. All right. I see the emojis coming through. Amazing. OK. Good deal. All right. So before we jump in, um, we just want to share a little bit about AppTenant. Uh, I know we have quite a few customers that are on here today, um, but there are some of you who possibly haven't heard about AppTenant before. So for those of you who don't know us, we do work with some of the world's largest brands. And as you can see on this slide, um, these are just a handful of the brands that we work with. And all of those brands Trust us because at our core, Attentive is a feedback company all about customer love. Our specific VOC solution really helps all of these brands collect and measure customer feedback to improve their customer's experience and ultimately improve their brand loyalty. So um, Attentive is going to help capture actionable emotions and feedback from the 99% of consumer voices that are typically missed. Usually, you're only hearing for 1% of your customer base. So um, the most important part, though, is that we can take that feedback from those voices that normally aren't heard and quickly turn that feedback into action. Um, so that's just a quick overview of AppTenant itself. You will see a little bit from um, our dashboard in this quick presentation. Um, but if you are curious to learn more about AppTenant, um, shoot us a message. We obviously can help you get in touch with the right people if you are not familiar with our company yet. So I'm actually going to throw it over to Lou to do just a speed run through some survey best practices before we jump into that Q&A. So I'll throw awesome. it over to you. Okay, well, thanks, Mel. So this will be pretty familiar if you've come to any of our previous webinars, but we just want to highlight a couple of things that we think are really key in building great surveys for mobile and also getting great feedback and boosting that response rate. So we'll go through these pretty quick and then we'll save the majority of time for questions. So with that, Kicking things off here, um, we have three things that we love to highlight for writing great surveys. And that's really a lot of preparedness. So the first one is defining your survey's purpose. Um, without having an understanding of what you're looking to accomplish for getting feedback, it's really hard to analyze that data and make sure that you're, it's actionable and you can follow up on it later. So defining that, that survey purpose early on is a super critical step here in ensuring that you're getting great feedback and also mitigating any survey fatigue and getting a good response rate. Um, be clear and concise with your questions. You don't want to overcomplicate it and you don't want to blast uh, tons of questions either. So making sure that you know exactly what you're asking and what the goal for the feedback is, is also really important in writing a great survey. And then also just have someone take it to review. Always getting a second set of eyes or a third set of eyes is really helpful um, in ensuring that you're writing a quality survey that is meaningful and is understood by the masses. Sometimes it's really easy to write something that makes total sense in your head and maybe that's just not applicable to everyone. So getting a second set of eyes is always super beneficial. Next up um, for reducing survey fatigue, we hear lots of questions around how you can go about reducing survey fatigue and making sure that you're really having intentional engagement opportunities with your customers. So you're preventing any survey fatigue or any um, you know, blips in the radar with those, those uh, relationships that you're working to build. So planning out your surveys and making sure you have a content calendar so that you're, you're not blasting tons of communication on the same days that you're doing um, surveys or you're not doing several interactions within one session for the user is super important to make sure that it's very clear and concise. 
Um, mastering the microsurvey. So microsurveys, super tiny, small interactions that get straight to the point and get you the feedback you need while not taking a ton of time from the customer is great for not only boosting that response rate, but building that relationship where customers are key on giving you feedback over time is really important. And also you can get some really great feedback from just one or two questions that we'll talk through here in a bit as well. And then finally, targeting matters, making sure that you're intentionally engaging with the right audience for the feedback you're looking for is super important. And there's tons of options for targeting that can help you really narrow that down and ensure that you're engaging meaningfully and then having those opportunities to follow up on feedback as well. We recommend a crawl, walk, run approach. Um, start small, one bite at a time. When I first became an of customer and began collecting feedback, I was getting wild amounts of data that can be super overwhelming when you're just getting into our user research feedback strategy. Um, so I started out just being super hyper-focused on App Store and Google Play Store views to identify trends there, and then starting small with little micro surveys to kind of identify some of those trends and dig deeper into issues that people are having having within the app or dig deeper on what we should be building next. Um, it's also start. It's also super important to categorize your feedback that you're looking for as well, um, so that you can understand what you're looking for and where you can build different um, feedback and engagement opportunities. Um, one thing that I've heard recently quite a bit from customers is also um, building a brand voice so that people understand who they're communicating with as well when they are giving this feedback. So you can actually start building those meaningful re uh, relationships with customers over time. Um, I started really small, started with Google Play and store reviews, then leveled up to the ratings dialogue or the um, love dialogue to get that first micro touch point of understanding sentiment across the applications. And then as I got comfortable, I built bigger surveys and I started asking for more future feedback as well. So definitely recommend a crawl, walk, run approach here. We have lots of templates within Aptenive, which are really great for kicking things off with small um, surveys. Um, a lot of the, the surveys that we see um, are used as templates are future feedback, research, improvement surveys, um, new feature feedbacks, feature requests. All of these are super helpful and small micro engagements that take the user about five seconds to fill out and help get you that information you need, especially when you're just starting out. So starting with a template can also help kind of reduce some of that overwhelming feeling of creating that first engagement opportunity. When we refer to templates here, it is specific to the language and the questions that are asked. We don't have any templates around branding as of now, um, but this is super helpful for making sure that those first questions that you're asking are super concise and have clear language that everyone will understand as well. Um, mastering that micro survey is super important and I don't think we can touch on this enough. Having one or two questions that are super consumable kind of helps allow you to ask for feedback more frequently while still mitigating that survey fatigue that some, um, some can feel. I know I always get those wild, um, big surveys in my email that are like 40 questions long and I get two, two pages into it and I'm like, oh, Okay, well, this was a time commitment. So being able to have those quick engagements is super important to boosting that response rate as well so that you're hearing from a larger segment of your audience that you're targeting. Um, another example of a micro survey is future feature. This is actually one that is a template that we see used quite frequently. And this helps to allow you to ask for um, feedback on prioritizing a specific feature. Um, we've actually used this a couple of times and I know I used it previously when I was a customer as well. And it was super helpful for just gut checking my roadmap and understanding that my priorities were aligned with the, the voice of the customer and what customers were actually needing from future um, features as well. So super helpful. And then finally, um, targeting, as we've mentioned before, super critical for engaging the right audience for feedback. Um, one of the other things here is following up on feedback too. You wanna close the loop after asking for feedback. So customers also don't get fatigue from giving feedback, giving feedback, getting feedback, and never getting any improvements or anything in return. So one great option here is actually using response targeting to follow up on previous um, surveys to either ask for more information or close the loop and say, hey, go try out this new feature that we just released. 
we, you know, we know that you had some issues with something before, but you can follow up and close that loop and kind of build that meaningful relationship with customers over time. So also a great option. And there's tons of other targeting options as well that are super helpful for narrowing down that, um, that audience and getting correct engagement. Okay, so super speed, uh, key takeaways here. Surveys do not have to be complex to be successful. In fact, we find the more simple, the better. Um, targeting your audience will yield better results. So the more granular you're targeting and more intentional you are with engaging with your customers, the better survey response rate, the better feedback that you're going to get. And embedding those surveys into critical parts of the customer journey will allow you to identify friction points, um, which is super helpful. One other thing I didn't mention here previously, but something that I found super helpful as a customer when I was looking for feedback, whenever we released new features, we actually built in um, surveys as part of the design. So we were thinking through those opportunities that would be great for um, customer feedback or engagement directly within um, the design and discovery phase, which really helped to kind of narrow down how we were engaging with customers and really help to make sure that we're engaging at the right moment so we weren't blocking any critical points of functionality or causing any um, frustration and just trying to get something done within the application. So with that said, time for Q&A. Um, I believe we already have some questions rolling in, so let's kick this off. Where would we like to start, Mel? So um, we had a question come in from Andrew and it says, is there an option for the user to pick long, medium or short surveys? I'm gonna make the assumption that this question is in relation to templates. Um, and all of our templates really try to embrace the micro survey format to help drive the highest response rate. So from a templating perspective, there's not really that option available, but that being said, you can absolutely use longer format surveys with Aptenib if your audience is known to be responsive to those longer form surveys. Honestly, I think that there are definitely certain industries and certain companies that have those relationships with their customers where they can ask a 20 question survey and every customer will be like, yes, I'm in, I'm passionate, I'm gonna give you that feedback. But I think we really try to focus on those micro surveys here, not only because that improves your response rate, but it also um, relieves that survey fatigue that Lou had mentioned earlier. If you're able to get a pulse, um, maybe on a two question survey, maybe the question is just asking if someone is interested in something or had a good or bad experience, you can then follow up with a separate interaction later that continues to probe on that specific audience only. Um, which should really narrow down and give you like the best results for you to drive your decision making. So while our templates don't really have long, medium, short, there's there's absolutely the opportunity to do that um, if you would like to within our platform. But I always, always, always encourage that micro survey format just because it's kind of proven time and time again on our side to be the most effective way to survey. All right, Andrew says, makes sense. Thanks for the detail. Yes, of course. Um, Lou, anything else you want to add to that? No, I think that's all spot on. And I would also say that our templates, I believe they're all less than five questions. So they're definitely all micro surveys and meant to be really quick interactions to get the right feedback at the right moment. Um, Paige asked, not a customer, but considering becoming one, wondering in regards to options, if it is possible to purchase and implement individual features, capabilities, or if you have to choose and purchase an entire solution. Um, so we have mobile and web as separate product offerings and underneath both of those you get all of the interactions because we believe it's super important that you have the full value of the suite to be able to follow up on feedback get the right feedback and engage with your users and analyze all that data. So um, you can select mobile or you can select web but regardless, even if you choose both you'll get all of those features um, for all of the interactions to be able to get great user feedback and follow up with your customers later. Yeah, and obviously we're hitting on surveys as our main interaction type here. Um, Lou mentioned the love dialogue earlier, which is one of the core, like main, most valuable uh, interactions that we have as um, a company. We also have notes, which um, I don't think we really hit on too much in this, uh, but notes, the flexibility of notes is wild. Um, you can use it for following up with your customers if you would like to. You can use it if you have 
a prepared outage coming up. It's really, it's really nice because it doesn't require any dev work to get those notes up once they're set up. So you as a product manager or a marketing manager um, can just go right into the system and send a message to your customers or a set of targeted customers um, to get them like, you know, informed on specific things. I use them a lot for new features that are available. So if I just release something as a product person um, and I just want my customers to know about it, um, I can then just put a note up like, hey, this new feature is available and deep link them right into that feature to be able to go try it out. And then can ask them to provide feedback. So that helps with that iteration cycle of once you've released something to continue to improve it. Um, we also do have Message Center as another uh, interaction type, which acts kind of as like your little live chat buddy. Um, so you can go in and um, use Message Center to have support um, at your customer's fingertips as well. So we do have everything kind of intertwines at some point. Uh, but we do have a variety of interactions and we do think every single one of those interactions is really, really important to a full strategy. Yeah, so another, yeah. <laughs> another great use case for notes as well is actually um, asking customers if they're interested in providing feedback before presenting them with a survey. So yeah. linking that note directly to a survey um, so that they can opt in to feedback. It also really helps with mitigating some survey fatigue because customers can just say no and that's it. Um, but you can also get better response rates by prompting first that way so that you're really intentional once again with who you're engaging with and you're letting them choose their journey. Yes, 100%. I think we've all heard, like, <laughs> I'm sure, Lou, you've seen this. Like, when I was using Aptenev, I had a subset of what I called grumpy customers that would just in the open response would be like, I don't want to answer surveys. And it's like, okay, you can get rid of that out of the gate. Like immediately I was like, how do I service these people? So they're not mad at me for prompting a survey to them because yeah. while 99% of the voices aren't heard, some of those voices, they don't want to be, heard. they just don't want it. So <laughs> I think that's a really good use case. Yeah. And even so there's always that one response. that's like, why are you asking me for feedback? I don't want to give you feedback. I think regardless. So it's kind of funny how that works. Yes. Um, Andrew asked, are you able to target subsets of your customer base? 1000%. Um, targeting is super granular. So you can hone in on specific attributes of what a customer has done within the application for targeting, um, who they are, um, whatever custom data you pass through, you can use for targeting. So it can be really powerful in how you choose to configure it. Um, and we also have the options for response targeting, as we mentioned as well. So you can have those opportunities to follow back up with customers who have previously um, tried out a feature um, or uh, given specific feedback that you want to dig a little bit deeper in. So there's definitely lots of art of options for creating segments and targeting your customers for very granular feedback. Mel, anything else you want to add there? No, I think targeting is, it's so important and it can be intimidating at first when you're like, ah, I don't know, like, I just want the most, I just want the most people to respond to this survey. Um, you know, I, I'm not used to writing like really, really specific queries to understand like who I need to be focusing on. And that's totally okay. When you think of like the crawl or the like crawl, walk, run strategy, like you can start large and then figure out like, Ooh, actually I want to be targeting people based on their location. How do I get that location data in here? Okay, great. I have store ID that they're associated with that they purchased at. Like, let's go through and target in that way. And it, it's kind of fun to like go through and figure out like, who do I want to be targeting? How do I want to be targeting them? What place in their customer journey do I need to be serving up a survey or a follow-up? Um, and going through like that querying process is like kind of fun for me at least. Um, so it does, it does feel like when you first start, it can be like a little bit overwhelming with all the options that you have. But once you start realizing what types of problems you're trying to solve, and who your target audience is to tr help you solve those problems, that targeting becomes easier and easier. And it opens up a lot of doors with things like having response targeting available or having fan signals data available to say, hey, I just wanna serve this, this survey up to people who have told me that they like our app the last two times, uh, because that will give me that data that says like, hey, we're asking our like super fans for this, or I'm sending a note to our super fans who have like admitted like, hey, yes, I love your brand. Um, versus you might just want to create two separate surveys with two separate tones. If someone is saying, Hey, I don't like your brand. I'm not having a good experience. Like having that sentiment awareness 
and being able to target people just based on that can be huge. Can you tell I nerd out on targeting? <laughs> um, cool. Let's see here. Uh, so Calvin said, is the ability to place or attach a specific survey prompt to an on-screen element something that is currently available or on the roadmap? So yes, this is currently available. Um, what you would do is you would implement a event for tracking. And so really the best way to think about those events is there are different opportunities to interact or engage with your with your customers and your audience. So all of those events are where you would prompt an interaction. So if you tag a new um, feature or a new button or anything else with an event, you'll then be able to follow that up dynamically from the platform and reach out with feedback, um, create a interaction, a note, a survey, prompt a love dialogue um, off of those where events um, to be able to engage very specifically with your customers. So yes, absolutely is the answer to that one. Um, Mel, anything else to add there? No, I think similar to targeting, like event management and event creation can also be like a little intimidating at first. Like, I don't know what to add. And we have very specific suggestions around like how we suggest you set up event tracking um, out of the gate. But one of the things is like, you're constantly releasing new features. You're constantly iterating on what you're doing in your product. And you'll probably also wanna continuously add those events to start tracking um, events a little bit differently as you release those features. So just baking that into your process of like, hey, I wanna be tracking this new feature and I wanna be able to have feedback come in from that kind of specific to this feature is really important. Um, the other thing too that isn't necessarily directly related to this, but kind of, um, when we're talking about like releasing um, new versions of your app or new features, we do have the ability in our reporting to be able to add in a flag that's basically like, oh, a new release went out. So it's really, really good for tracking things like ratings and reviews. So if you knew that there was maybe a big bug in an earlier version, you got a release out, and then you start seeing your, your ratings go back up or fluctuate differently. It's really nice to have that flag just like living in there so that as you're looking at things like over the year, you can be like, oh shoot, we had like a dip here and then a release here, why? Like you can go through and annotate that. And I think that's a, one of the less lesser used features of Aptena that I really like <laughs> and enjoy being able to have. It's good for new feature releases. It's good for just any general releases you may have. Um, and that's a little bit on the reporting side and, and going off on a ramble there. But I do think if you aren't using that feature right now and you are a customer, I would look into that because I think it's super useful to have for your data. Yeah, and you can also target based on that too, which is always helpful for following up on specific app releases if there's any questions or anything else. Um, one more thing on the targeting that I just thought of as well is that um, if it can be really overwhelming sometimes to launch your first survey and get like millions of responses and have all of that data to analyze. And if you're concerned about how you're targeting and how many people you'll be reaching, using a feature like random sampling is always a great option as well to get a very specific percentage of responses that you don't have to worry about having to consume and follow up on a huge volume of feedback, especially when you're starting out. Um, and then another follow-up on events as well is that one of the best strategies that I found as a customer and product manager is that as I was going through and building new features and releasing those features during that delivery uh, cycle, going through and figuring out, okay, how am I going to want to get feedback on this future, this feature in the future? Where am I going to want to put events to understand how customers are using it so I can ask for feedback? For feedback or engage them for um, a survey or a note or anything else is super critical so that you are thinking ahead and you don't have to be reactive in, oh, well, I just launched a new feature. Now I want to get feedback, but I don't have any events. So kind of building in and baking in that pre-planning process is really helpful. And it's just kind of part of the delivery cycle and part of like acceptance criteria or definition of done once you're, you're kind of in the, the groove of it. Yeah, I think every large feature that I had in the acceptance criteria for delivery was at an app tentative event. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. We did have a couple of questions, one around where can customers find training to help with new hires? Um, we have really, I would say, thorough documentation on um, the app tentative side of things. If you go to learn.apptentive.com, um, you will find a ton of documentation available there. We have product doc documentation and developer documentation, and it's all pretty thorough. 
Um, that is what I would serve up to new hires, depending on if they're a dev or, or a product person um, coming on board. Um, and also there was a question around um, several of my customers have asked to speak with references, super users, to understand the internal lift of resources needed to leverage all of the great functionality available. What if, if we have some guidance on that? Um, so the initial setup to get AppTenant implemented is one thing. Um, it's not a big lift. I remember implementing this whenever I was first going through this as a customer and I was like, wow, that was really quick and easy. Um, implementation itself is pretty straightforward and then you just go through testing. Um, but as far as using all the different interactions and all the different feature sets that we have, I'm going to reiterate the crawl walk one run method here because I do think that we have a very like intentional way of proposing our customers do this when they're onboarding. Um, I think Lou mentioned it really well earlier is like, hey, like I'm using the love dialogue out the gate just to gauge like where my customer base is even at. Like, are they enjoying this experience? Yes or no? What's our breakdown there? And then understanding how to layer in surveys from there. And then understanding, okay, I'm getting feedback regularly. What's my note strategy look like? And I'm not gonna lie, all this stuff is super easy to do in the platform. Like setting it up, like if you if you wanna run a new survey or a new note, it takes literally two minutes to set up if you already know what questions you wanna ask. It's not a hard process to actually set up and implement, which was like one of my highest rated uh, things whenever I was using AppTenive, it was like, this is so easy for me. Like I barely, it, it barely takes any time to set up and go. Um, but it, it totally depends on um, how intense you want to be using AppTenive. If you're going to be launching like 10 surveys a day versus like once a month, um, it totally depends. And I think we had someone um, respond here to you, Dina, in the chat um, about following up with you there. But I, I do think that crawl lock run is just like so key to being able to be like, let me let me get that huge, huge, huge gauge of like current state of our entire audience and then start honing in on these other features we have available to make sure that we're um, using the entire breadth of the product suite because you will, like you'll use all of that tenant. Everything is extraordinarily valuable. And I can say that because I was a previous customer. It's not just me like blown smoke here. <laughs> I'll second that. <laughs> Um, what else do we have here? Any other questions that y'all have while we're here? Like we said, the hour is yours. So if you have any follow-ups, we're here for you. All right. We did get one question that says, is quantitative or qualitative feedback more important? Um, for example, are reviews or ratings more important? Um, so this is an interesting question. I think both play their part when it comes to research. I love using quantitative data for just a quick snapshot to determine like, okay, is there a clear trend here? Like, is there something I'm looking at a chart? Like what is overwhelmingly the decision that can be made here? And if yes, like make that strong decision, know it's backed by data and like move forward. I like using all of the qualitative data if there's no clear insights from those snapshots, right? So if everything is like kind of split evenly in a multiple choice question, for example, um, I'll tend to use that qualitative feedback as a mechanism to dig deeper and learn more um, and really dig into the why around things. So I do think both are important, um, especially whenever there are, there are a lot of people that will do like an other option or an NA or just want to give like their opinion, even if the multiple choice option is there for them to select. So I, I generally recommend if you're doing just a two question micro survey, you've got one um, multiple choice question and one follow up that allows them to have an open ended response if they want to provide more detail for you to dissect. Um, and I generally will not make that open-ended question required. Um, so yeah, I think both are, are really important. They play a different role, um, but that's why we kind of have diversity in our survey questions. We want to be able to dig into and splice and dice data a little bit differently. 
Yeah, I think one of the other really helpful things there is using the quantitative feedback or the quantitative data to help set the priority as well and say, okay, this is what we're building. And then really digging into those actual voices to understand how that should shape out is really helpful and kind of getting some more additional context into how people are using features, how they feel about things, what they're really looking for and why. Um, I always used the quantitative for making the prioritization calls, especially when I was doing like a template for future feature research or anything like that. So I could kind of stack break my priorities. And then I would dig into that uh, that that actual voice data of those free form response questions, especially with like the design team or just doing a small discovery group to hear what people are saying so that we could all kind of build a sense of empathy for what customers are looking for and hear directly from the customer. And also so it could help kind of educate the what and how it shaped out, so. Yeah, I've literally used um, app kind of surveys because my internal team couldn't decide on what to name the feature. And I was like, let's just ask our audience and, and pick what they want. <laughs> and so we did. And it was like, cool, that's what the feature's name is going to be. Like, it's like silly. That's like, hey, we have this at our fingertips. We can get, you know, 25,000 responses in 24 hours. Like, why wouldn't we just use their voice and then be like, hey, thank you for the input. We named it the thing that you wanted us to name it. So then it's like a little, like a double win. <laughs> yeah. Good opportunity to kind of re-engage and also like build that relationship and establish that uh, ongoing cadence of communication with customers too. Yes. What else do we have here? We have one question that's how do I hear from more of my customers? Um, and the answer here is targeting. It really depends on how you go about setting up your targeting. You can even go super broad and just target everyone if you would like to hear from literally everyone. But being more intentional with what you're looking to get feedback on is also super important. So kind of taking a step back, saying, um, what do I want feedback on? And then based on what I want feedback on, identifying criteria that will help you target that specific audience. Um, and so targeting is really the key here. Targeting is so granular. You can open it up to a lot of customers, or you can kind of scale back down the number of responses you're getting with something like random sampling. So you're just hearing from a specific percentage of that segment as well um, is super helpful. Mel, anything else to add there? I think whenever we work through this with customers, a lot of the times, um, we dig into, it comes back to the events, right? And digging in where we're placing these types of interactions. Um, those where events are really important. If there's only three people stumbling on that event, you're really only gonna get maybe three responses total. And so having a space where you know there's a large quantity of people um, landing or doing something um, in your mobile app or in, in on your website and then understanding, will this be interrupting the customer experience? Yes or no, um, is really important. So like having that understanding of the customer journey, I, I think a really good example of like hitting the customer at the right time is you wouldn't pop up a survey mid checkout process, right? Like, hey, how's the checkout process going for you? You're going to do that after they've already gone through and purchased, right? They've gone through the entire part of the purchasing process that you need them to. They're confirmed. Now is the time to be like, hey, how was that process? How did that go for you? Um, there are, there have been like surveys that have been popped up for me. I'll, I'll give an example of like an HVAC uh, company that I was reviewing. Um, I was going through and like submitting a lead form and like mid set filling out the lead form, it popped up and was like, hey, how's your experience on the website today? And I'm like, bad, now that you interrupted me filling out a form, like that's not good. Um, and so we try to be very intentional about guiding our customers on like, hey, these events are really, really important. And like, yes, you're gonna wanna aim for some events that have like more broad um, and tons and tons and tons of views, but make sure it's like in the right place where you can really kind of piss people. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we've all been hit with those surveys where you're like in the middle of doing something and then something pops up and you're like, please go away. Yeah. yeah. I actually see that a lot with like the native rating dialogues um, from yes. iOS. Um, In fact, I just got one of those this morning. I was reading the news and drinking my coffee and I got hit with one in the middle of an article and I was like, 
I just opened this app. Please leave me alone. Yeah. And I'm always like this. They must not be using that time. Like <laughs> every time <laughs> they're just prompting this based on when I opened the app last, which like is not a good way to do that. And because I just upgraded my phone, I'm getting all of them. So yeah. that's fun. <laughs> What else do we have in the question category? Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Got one, Lou? Yeah, we've got one. How do you target future surveys based on survey responses? Can that be done through segments or do I need to manually load the user IDs into future surveys? Uh, response targeting, which we've already touched on a couple of times, is the easiest way to go about this and the best way to go about this because you can literally pick out something specific that someone answered on a previous survey, how they responded to um, an interaction, and you can even be more granular and look for keywords that someone left in a um, freeform response or key phrases, anything else there. So you can follow up on specific feedback around um, whatever it is that you're looking to target. One example of this that I actually ran through with a customer recently was someone who was getting a, a lot of feedback around these general vague app crashes without a lot of context on where it was happening or um, what they were doing that led to that interaction. And so they were able to set up a survey with a um, with response targeting for all of the keywords crash and app close and all of those like hot words that kind of key to those issues like freezing and then follow up directly to ask a really specific three question survey around where were you when the app froze? How did it impact your user experience? Anything else you wanna tell us, which kind of helped them to dig a little bit deeper and identify those issues. Um, one thing that they can do after as well is once they get that app release out with all of those good fixes in it, they can follow up to everyone who had previously um, reported that that those issues or give an additional feedback and say, try us out, let us know how it goes. Uh, Cause we just released an, an update with all these great fixes. So very cool to see that come to fruition too. Cause I always love those use cases. Yes, response targeting is a game changer. I think it's such a um, good tool to be able to close that feedback loop. Like we mentioned earlier, it's just like nice to be like, hey, we heard you and we did a thing about it. And by the way, if the thing that we did didn't meet your criteria, let us know, like continue to like inform us and give us that feedback. Um, yeah, such a nice, nice little feature. <laughs> I have to say, I'm one of those nerds who always fills out surveys and gives feedback whenever I see it, like I run into it in my regular day-to-day -day journey. Um, but I'm definitely more inclined to give feedback and give better feedback and answer those freeform responses as well when they actually like do something about it. So if you ask me over and over again for, oh, how are you doing in this application? How's your experience today? But nothing ever improves or changes. Every single time you ask that question, I feel less and less inclined to go and spend some time actually giving you meaningful feedback. So I love seeing co companies who like follow up on that and say, hey, we fixed these issues or um, hey, like try it out now, give us additional feedback or you mentioned this, like, why don't you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, big fan of that. And it's actually funny whenever we see those emails or anything else, Mel and I always like forward them to each other and like, oh, look at this, look what they're doing. Look how nice this is. Yes. Um, I think it's interesting too, because we just did, um, our team put together an e an ebook or a guide here, six horrifying product management fears and how to face them. And mm -hmm. some of the like statistics we have in there were like very relatable of like, hey, like I'm I'm going to have a better relationship with this brand if I feel like they're actually going to do something with my feedback versus like if I give them feedback, I expect them to follow up. And if they don't, I'm going to feel like they're not really listening to me. Um, so a little plug there for, uh, our, our latest guide. Um, but I think that's like very real for a lot of us. Like, Hey, is my feedback going into the abyss? I have like a really, I have a small coffee shop that has a bunch of little chains like near me in Charlotte. Um, they're called summit coffee and I'm obsessed with them. I love them. And they have a mobile app that has rewards, uh, and they've like been iterating on that app. And like, sometimes I'll be like, 
like they'll send out an email and hey, this new feature is available. And I'll be like, I'm literally that product manager that's like, hey, it'd be really nice if you explained what XYZ was like on this page. So you don't have to like dig to find it. And their product person or their operations person, whoever's they respond to me every time. No, like, thank you so much for this feedback. We updated this. And then I literally see the update and I'm like, that's amazing. Like they're just like a small little coffee shop. Like, oh my God, yeah, we, we totally hear you. Um, and I love that. It just like makes me feel good. And it like reinforces my loyalty to their brand um, in a very specific way. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. I don't know if we have, we have any other questions coming through. If not. I see yeah. one more that I think oh. is Let's do this. Okay, so last one, understanding survey frequency. How often should you recycle surveys and recollect responses from the same users? Um, so I think it totally depends. And I think Mel probably has some thought here as well, uh, but it depends on the survey and it depends on what you're asking. So for things like NPS, uh, that's typically like one question, I'd say it's probably safe to serve up quarterly to get that constant pulse throughout the year. Um, but I wouldn't do it more than that either because I wouldn't want to fatigue customers on the same um, survey or the same question over and over again. Um, but if you're looking to check out an experience or something that happens more frequently, um, I'd test out a smaller portion of your audience specifically first and then kind of grow from there. And then also um, there's an option within targeting that I think is important to call out too, which is has seen interaction. So you can also create um, different targeting options and set to has seen interaction, any surveys, specific surveys, so that you don't run into multiple surveys or interactions given a specific time period as well. So that can be really helpful for just making sure that customers only see one interaction a week or only see um, a specific segment of interactions, anything else kind of mitigate some of that like fatigue that you'd see there. Yeah, um, I think that's a common like fear that a lot of people have is like, I don't want to show them three surveys like right in a row. Like, how do I mitigate that? And that's spot on with the targeting there is being able to say like, hey, we're not going to serve this person three three surveys in one session. We're very intentional about making sure we can allocate those in a in a very specific way. So, it's a good call out. Awesome. I don't think I see anything else rolling in. Was this helpful for you guys? The, those of you who are remaining, was this helpful? <laughs> Hopefully it was slightly informative, if nothing else, mildly entertaining and um, able for you guys to geek out a little bit. Not that you guys can talk back to me. I'm just talking into the dumbbell sphere right now. Okay, we got it. Yes, thank you. Yay. Wow. Um, amazing, cool. Um, so, I think this is it. I think this is the end of office hours. Um, to those of you who asked questions, thank you. Um, if you have any other questions that come to mind, definitely feel free to respond to either a follow-up email or a product happy hour email. Um, you can reach out, you can find Lou and I both um, in those inboxes. So um, feel free to do that. The next few office hours are already scheduled. Um, so hopefully, we will see you guys there. Uh, you will get a reminder email. Um, and we have the first one, um, November 16th, is going to be around those product management greatest fears that we just mentioned with our little guide. Um, we also have uh, November 30th, which will be iOS versus Android best practices for your app store success. Um, I've been talking with a lot of customers that have been seeing a very stark difference between iOS and Android ratings and reviews. And this is just Let's talk about best practices. Let's talk about how iOS and Android are different from one another and what you need to do to be successful on both platforms. Um, and then on December 14th, we will be talking about seasonality findings. Um, are people happier and more likely to give positive feedback depending on the season? How do different industries get impacted? Um, in my previous life, when I was with an HVAC company, weather was such a dramatic mood changer for sentiment, for messaging. Um, I think this is a really interesting topic and I'd be curious to learn a little bit more about how your industry see seasonality findings. Um, so that should be kind of a fun, hopefully we'll learn a lot about what industries each other is in and, and see if there's any um, direct comparisons between some who have the same industry or different industries. But yeah, if you have any questions in advance for any of those office hours, 
um, feel free to submit them uh, ahead of time so we can prioritize answering them uh, you know, to get your question answered. And then you can always scoot on and do what else you're doing that day. Um, but yeah, we'll um, share the link to submit questions. I think Madeline is on that. Um, and then, yeah, uh, as a final reminder, um, there are different ways you can connect with us um, before we sign off. If you are a customer, you can always reach out to your CSM. If you are not a customer, um, you can choose your own adventure. Uh, we have a 30 day trial available. Uh, you can schedule a demo. Um, always download all of our ebooks. I think our ebooks are extremely informative and very good to help drive your strategy. Um, so definitely do that. And yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all we've got. Anything else on your end, Lou? Nope. I enjoyed getting to geek out and hang out with everyone. So appreciate it. Yeah. We will see you in a couple weeks.